Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is John Sproul and I'll be your service leader this morning. And uh, welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary and everyone who has joined us online. Uh, I'll be joined by our minister, Reverend uh, Rosemary Morrison, and we hope that everyone feels welcome here today. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing, individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all of our children. And so as we begin this special hour together, I invite you to quiet uh, your devices uh, and yourselves so that we can all enjoy the service further. Maybe we be reminded here of the highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but we are connected here together and on everybody online uh, in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and all to each other. Welcome here today. And before we begin the service, I just wanted to ask if there was anyone in the sanctuary who had an announcement that they needed to give. No announcements. Um, so thanks very much. We'll now begin our time of contemplation and music with a prelude, uh, which is a wonderful title, The Oneness of Everything, uh, uh, played by uh, our own Karen Mills. Karen. Uh, and we will now have our chalice uh, lighting. I'll be reading the words of uh, Reverend Scott Taylor, the beauty woven fine. And uh, we'd like to ask uh, Lois uh, Karich to come and uh, light the chalice. The beauty woven fine. As we celebrate life's beauty, we may, may, may we never forget that we are part of it. It is woven around us, through us, between us. We are here to notice those elegant strands, the way they call to us, the way they hold us, the way they connect us. May our time together today enable that beauty to shine. Thank you. Thanks, Louise. And uh, now for our first hymn, can we all rise who are willing and able to sing hymn number 360, here we are gathered. Here we have gathered. And the, uh, online, the words will appear for you.
I would like to invite Maria Jenkins up to the pulpit to um, share our time for all ages. She's going to report back. Well, I'll let her tell you what she's going to do. Good morning. My name is Maria Jenkins, and I am the youth advisor here at UCE. Yes, did you know we still have a youth group and they still do things, although most of them are kind of hybrid in-person slash online things, but that's good. Uh, last weekend, a small group of us were able to travel to Vancouver for uh, both the Canoodle Youth Conference and the Chorus Young Adult Conference, which were happening at the same time at different churches. I feel like I had the easy job. I was taking uh, two youth slash young adults to the Vancouver Unitarians Church, which is like a 30 minute straight shot from the airport. You take five uh, SkyTrain stations and then walk a kilometer. I'm told if we had waited a little bit, we could have gotten a bus for most of the rest of the way, but we thought we're fine, we can walk. I am very out of shape. Uh, <laughs> Our one young adult who was traveling to Chorus had a bit more of an adventure getting there because Chorus was being held at the North Shore Unitarian Church. And in the immortal words of my beloved friend, Arthur Berman, the North Shore Unitarian Church takes one of two things to locate, a local to drive you, or a secret decoder ring. Google Maps has no idea where this building is, but uh, the chorus organizers, of course, had a plan for that, and it was all fine. But um, this was, of course, the first in-person gathering of the national youth and young adult communities since the pandemic. Uh, we were all required to take rapid tests when we arrived at the site before we were allowed in the building and there was a contingency plan in case there were any positive uh, results which there were not um sleep is always a bit of a thing at youth cons uh and i found myself in the rather unenviable position of supervising the loud room which is basically for people who don't care if they sleep or not and don't care if they are in a gender segregated zone. So that basically ends up being on average two thirds of the con population on the first night and then slowly goes down as the weekend progresses because there is no, there is no requirement that you sleep in the same space every night as long as you find a place to put your sleeping bag. Um, we were masked indoors at all times, except for when you had gotten into your sleeping bag and were getting ready to sleep, which is good because let's face it, we would have gone to sleep with masks on our faces and woken up with masks hanging off of our ears and nothing else. Um, my Probably the, the highlight of the weekend for myself in particular, but also uh, most of the youth actually, is on Sunday night, there is a coffee house slash talent show slash open mic event. And I, uh, I decided that I was going to do myself a favor and do a dry run of the song, one of the songs that I actually sang yesterday for my former spouse's memorial service. So that was seven verses of Leonard Cohen's Alleluia. Did you know there were seven verses? Most people do at most four. Even Leonard Cohen rarely did more than four, um, which I did with the assistance of a 16-year-old pianist who had gotten the music Saturday afternoon for a Sunday night performance. She was a star. But it was also my first opportunity to see Zion Askey, who some of you may recall as uh, Jennifer Askey's youngest offspring, dancing. Now, I have known that Zion is a dancer for a very long time, but I had never actually seen it before. And I am going to try to convince them to dance for us for the pride service, wish me luck. And then on Monday morning, when one of the, co the canoodle coordinators actually came to wake me up because I had slept through all manner of shenanigans and was now late for breakfast, there were four individuals in the breakfast hall with gold crowns on their heads made of construction paper. 
that said in Sharpie, all nighter. <laughs> there had been quite a few more than four people who had intended to pull an all-nighter on Sunday night, but only four of them actually made it. No sleep till breakfast. And one of them was our very own Violet Slevin. <laughs> I was so proud. <laughs> so uh, connections were made and deepened. And one just final note, we get mail bags at Canoodle. And Everybody gets a mailbag, including the adult advisors, and during the course of the weekend, little notes are written and placed into mailbags for various people, and those writing the notes have the option. They can sign them, or they can leave them anonymous. And I still missed up even thinking about this, because one person, and I know it was not one of ours because ours both signed theirs, wrote the simple words, Something about you feels like home. Thank you. I got this. There we go. Thank you very much, and that was lovely to uh, uh, hear. I remember in our time, just way back, my time with youth group, we never got to go anywhere. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had we had hot dog roasts at Emily Murphy Park, but uh, I will fight for the but although I must admit, as a young youth in the Unitarian Church, a really cool thing is we uh, a bunch of us um, got to hang out with the Draft Dodgers, which the University uh, which the Unitarian Church housed many Draft Dodgers at Unitarian congregations homes as they came up from the United States uh, protesting the Vietnam War. So that's a bit of history. Um, the, uh, now is the time for uh, sharing our abundance, which is a quality of our church. One of the purposes of this church community is to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. In addition to supporting this community, we also make a monthly commitment to the wider community. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. We take an offering that allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. And for the month of May, uh, apps given the, um, what was just talked about with the youth, it is towards uh, the youth in our community and it's YES, um, which is Y-E-S-S, -S, an acronym for Youth Empowerment and Support Services. And it's been around for 40 years, serving the youth in Edmonton. It provides immediate and low barrier 24 seven shelter a drop-in resource center, temporary supportive housing, and individualized wraparound supports for young people in our community aged 15 to 24. And they work co collaboratively with a network of care focused on prevention of youth ho homelessness uh, with the, their necessary support. So it's a really worthy uh, cause. Uh, generally, just so you know, many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through an automatic withdrawal for the, from their accounts. And offering plates are at the back for those in the sanctuary and so those online to uh, please encourage you and those here to visit the uh, the YESS website to make a uh, donation and we thank you in advance for your generosity of spirit and action um, and so if everyone can join me in singing from you I receive our hymn of the month 1058 be ours a religion and so people if they can stand um, if they're willing and able in the sanctuary and you can stand actually online if you want um, as long as you can still see your screen um, but the words of words will come up in the sanctuary and on your screen and please join us in hymn of the month be ours a religion
Thank you, and good morning, everyone. I was at a folk club um, thing on Friday night, and uh, the, the young man that came out, and people clapped, and he, you know, he just was like. So I'll try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, so much better, full of life. Thank you. I, I wanted to add a little bit to what Maria said about how important it is for our youth to have these kinds of experiences. That that's what creates, you know, and I talk to lifelong you use, um, that's what makes them into lifelong you use. And so I really am appreciative of this congregation for the support that they give to the youth group in providing space and understanding and money. And they did, they did fundraising, it was, their own, it was their money, but the fundraising probably came, I don't know, did it, some of it come out of pockets around here too? Yeah, so you bought into the fundraising, so I really appreciate that. And um, it's, I just, again, it's so important that um, these young people get a chance to go out and meet other UUs. Unitarian Universalism is so small in Canada and really in the United States as well, that we can begin to think that we're isolated. And the youth need to know that we're not, that there's a big group of people that care about them. So that's my little youth group plug. I'm just so thrilled that we have a pretty darn good sized youth group here, so thank you. Okay, and now we'll head into a time of meditation. For the meditation today, we're just going to center ourselves, feel our bodies, and then we're going to listen to a piece by Sarah Thompson called The Beauty of the Dancer. So our theme this month is Nourishing Beauty. And I hope that you find in this piece a sense of beauty, a sense of trust, of hope. Um, she does a beautiful job. It's uh, a, a, a combination of the beauty of the dancer and the Navajo prayer of beauty is before me, beauty is behind me. I hope you enjoy that. And the idea is for you just to meditate through this song. So I'm, by invitation, never by demand, I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths with me. In and out. In and out. And on your own time, of course. Notice how the air fills your lungs, making it expand, and then it rests for just a second before letting go. You have to open to receive and close to let go, as is, as is with breath, is with life. To let go in order to allow the new the energy, the life back in. Feel the feet, your feet on the floor, uncross your legs if you want. Feel the chair and wiggle into it. Let that chair, couch, bot, floor, recliner, whatever it is you are on, hold you. Feel your muscles relax. Are you holding tension? Breathe into that tension. Are you in pain? Breathe into your pain. It might go away. It's good to acknowledge it. I invite you to continue in a state of meditation as we listen to the spirit, the beauty of the dancer.
dancer You hear the beauty of the song You feel the beauty all around you You wonder where you belong You wonder where you belong You are the beauty of the dancer You are the beauty of the song You are the beauty all around you You stand permission to put that up on our YouTube. In this same spirit of beauty, acknowledging beauty around us and within us, in our relationships, in our lives, in our environment, I invite you to come and light a candle, joy of concern, 
of something that's weighing heavy on your heart. And come around this way. We need to pick up the candles from this side and light and, and then douse them here. Um, I invite you to do that now as you wish. Um, thank you. Karen will provide us with some background music. Thank you.
And John is going to light one last candle for us. This candle represents all those things that are known and unknown within us, that we're holding, perhaps needing to let go, to make room for new beauty and new life. Thank you. Our, you may have noticed we have switch things over here and we have Coriolis light we're calling it um, and so I am very very grateful for to announce the debut debut <laughs> of our um, Coriolis light and they will be uh, with us during the morning services once in a while yeah make it Augment a little, bring a little bit more music in. Let's do this for them. Thank you for being here. I just wanted to share the story of this song before we sing it because I think it's so fantastic. Um, and also invite you to join in the spirit because that's really what the song is for. It's called Love One Another. And it's by a uh, Unitarian Universalist composer named Jason Shelton. And he was working in the Nashville church at the time that he wrote this. And he was working with the youth group. And they were about to go to a social justice conference. And they were kind of struggling because they, they wanted to make a statement. They wanted to have some sort of rallying cry for the protest. But they didn't want to be anti-everything. They didn't want to say, you know, down with this and we're against this and no more of that. They wanted something positive, something that people could join into. And so he took them out to the parking lot of the church and started just marching them around in a circle and said, what do you want to say? What words come to your mind? And they came up with three phrases and the three phrases are what make up the song. So let us love let us serve, let us honor one another, walking hand in hand. And you'll hear the different parts that join in. And if any of those parts speak to you and you want to join in, please do. It's very simple, it's very repetitive. And just uh, feel yourself marching in the parking lot. Let us love, let us 
going to ask you to do something unrehearsed, and I would actually like you to please go and light two more candles for us this morning. Um, I, I meant to say um, that we need to, it's, there's been two horrible tragedies in the United States um, in the last little while, Let's see if I can get through this without tearing up, um, in Buffalo, that black folks were targeted at, um, at a grocery store. And then uh, shortly, in, like just the other day, um, we had a sh shooter in a school in Texas that killed ch 19 children and two teachers. A lot of conversation going around about how to fix this, how to stop it. But right now, all we need to do is love and hold them in our hearts, hold the families, loved ones in our hearts, and lawmakers that they may be struck with wisdom. I know it's hard for us in Canada to understand it sometimes, isn't it? But without judgment, let's just love, honor, and serve. Thank you for that. Today, we're going to continue on with our work of creating our own Unitarian Universalist Unitarian Church of Edmonton's Mission, Vision, and Covenant Statements. And I'd like to read this from the UUA website, the Unitarian Universalist Association's website, titled Guided by Mission, Vision, and Covenant. It's written by congregational life staff, so there isn't one person that has taken credit for, for writing this. When done well, the vision, mission, and covenant process captures the people's sense of who they are and who they want to be as a community. It is the clearest articulation of why the people think the congregation should exist. And the results can help the congregation in all areas of its decision making. Where should we build our new building? The answer can be found in the, co in the congregation's vision. Where should we put our money? And why should we even bother to do donate money to a congregation? The answer you can say is found in the mission. This is what we have said is most important. So therefore, we should focus our money, time, and effort where we said we wanted them to go. So I've talked a lot about mission and how the question is, uh, with every decision we make as a congregation, we can ask the question, does this help us fulfill the mission of the church? So we're, we're working towards creating a mission and vision for this church. So how should we treat one another in community, in committee meetings, social gatherings, and religious exploration programs? Once again, the answer can be found in one of the covenants you've created, statements you've created, this time the covenant statement. Over and over again, the work and life of the congregation can be tested against the collective will and desire by referencing back always. Does this help us fulfill the mission of the church? Will we get to our vision if we do this? Are we in right relation? Are we in covenant with one another? They say the reason why most vision, mission, and covenant statements fail is because the congregation fails to plan for their effective implementation. We won't do that, though, Louise, will we? We will not fail. No. Louise has been spearheading this work behind the scenes. Thank you. Over the past few months, the governance implementation team and myself have been asking the congregation for input to bring clear vision and to bring clear mission, vision, and covenant statements into our Unitarian Church of Edmonton community. You see, historically has not had these statements as part of the framework. We have asked you to participate in this process, and you have, wholeheartedly. I'm gonna to point to the board camera person. 
just hold, let's look at our board. You have spoken. The, the blue dots, the blue rain, raindrops, signify your comments on what should be in our vision statement, and we have collated it into those five big drops. And then all the tulips uh, around the branch of May are the ideas that you have about what our mission statement should say. So you've been full participants in this process. From the UUA website page about mission and vision work, as with any generative open process, you need the participants to respect the facilitation and engage with the process, and I would say that you have. Remember, the secret to good vision, mission, and covenant process is making it easy and fun for people to be involved. And isn't that fun? That's a fun board, and we're going to leave it up through June. We believe, the government, governance implementation team and myself, believe we have offered an open process. And I would say that everyone has been very respectful. And you, the congregants, are here again and are well, well ready to engage again. And I hope you've had fun. We started at the beginning of May with Karen Mills helping us understand what a vision is. The many drops form that form the higher purpose, what we aspire to, and she did that during the Coriolis Sunday at the beginning of the month. Then we asked you to create beauty with your ideas of what we can do to meet those aspirations. As I put it a few weeks ago, the boots on the ground, step-by-step -step actions we need to take to live into our vision. These are represented by the tulips on the board. And you've done a lot of thinking and writing already. When it comes to the ideas for our mission statement, four themes emerged. Community outreach, growing our church, congregation, whichever word you prefer, social justice, and radical hospitality. I'm going to read out some of the examples from each of the categories. So these are some of the things we've gleaned from the tulips. So in community engagement, raise our profile in the community, reach out, engage. Outreach in places where there are people looking for a spiritual home. Reach out to LGBTQ plus and other religious groups. Reach out to community with space to meet. So we can reach out and say, people, we have space if you would like to use our space. Bring our music into the community. Make connections. Find ways other than the garage sale to engage more with local community. Be visible in the community. Growing our church is the second main theme that came out. Continue to grow relationships and trust in our membership. Reach out more to everyone in the congregation. Family programming for all ages and stages. Demonstrate goodwill, love, acceptance. Promote who we are. Continue with new care and connections model. Provide adult courses for spiritual growth and other topics. The third main category that came out of the tulips were so, is social justice. We need to define social justice goals and how to reach them. We need advocates. Activate our social justice. Initiate social change. Be good allies to those fighting for their rights. And radical hospitality. Talk to people not just in our reference group, so not just the people you know and normally gravitate to. Publicly, they also, the, in that one it said, talk to and hug, and I want to just say, don't hug without permission. <laughs> we can't just hug any random, no random hugging. <laughs> anyway, publicly speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Make space for marginalized voices to speak and be heard. Be friendly, helpful, welcoming. So let's just think about these things for a minute. Perhaps break them down a little. When I first read the collated list from the tulips in our community garden, I wondered if each of these statements could have started with, 
you should, or they could, or why don't they? Someone needs to do this work, not me. That's what I read in the, most of the statements. At first, I read them over many times, and I'm not sure if my initial interpretation is correct. What I've landed on is that there is a longing, a desire, if you will, that UCE becomes a strong and vibrant community that strives to meet not only the needs of its members and friends, but is also involved in lessening the suffering around us here in Queen Mary Park in downtown Edmonton, but also in the larger community. So when I say the mission is the boots on the ground, you're saying, well, those boots, Reverend Morrison, need to be steel-toed, not suede dress boots. My hope is that we understand that everyone will need a pair of work boots to make this work. If UCE is to be successful, well, it's already successful. That's not what I meant. So you're already successful. But if it if we are to grow in depth and vibrancy, which is what I'm hearing you say over and over again, that you wish to grow in depth and vibrancy, and if we are going to do that, it will take all hands on deck. And we don't need to do everything at once. Step by step, little steps, slow steps, with our mission as our blueprint, and our vision as our aspiration, together we can become stronger and stronger with each new program, each implemented idea, each soup Sunday, each chalice lit, and each meeting attended. We will help each other get strong. Let's listen to Coriolis sing about that. Coriolis Light <laughs> sing about, about becoming strong. They're going to sing Strong is What We Make Each Other by Mary Grigiolia. How we will be together. Covenants help members respect, hear each other by Donald Skinner, June 9, 2009. One of the first things visitors see when they walk into the building of the West Side Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Seattle is West Side's Covenant of Right Relations. The Covenant, a set of guidelines, does do designed to create a welcoming, respectful, safe, and vibrant spiritual community was adopted in 2007. 
not because the congregation had a problem to address, but because it believed the covenant might prevent such problems. The covenant calls members to listen attentively, express gratitude, value confidentiality, ask for help, respect differences, opinions, and acknowledge that everyone makes mistakes. As the congregation has grown, the covenant has become more important. We were a family-sized congregation when I came here. We have fairly rapidly doubled in size, and in that kind of growth, communication always gets more complicated. We wanted to put in place some good understandings of how to respond. Noting that, some, that covenants sometimes get done and then forgotten, Westside strives for visibility. Besides sitting in a frame on a table, the covenant is included in every orientation packet, discussed with newcomers, and invoked before each congregational meeting. Westside also created a compassionate congregation committee to respond to dif difficult and conflict situations. A covenant helps us understand how we are to be together, how to manage our relationships, our likes, our dislikes, what to say, who to say them to, how to participate, and how to take a rest. Basically, a covenant asks us to be our best selves. Oh, I ended the quote a while ago. I'm sorry. I should have said that. This is me talking. Basically, a covenant asks us to be our best selves and to be in community with integrity. A few weeks ago, I asked folks to tell me what we can give up when we have a covenant. Remember that? I used the flash paper. I wrote it. You all spoke to me, and then I wrote it down on the flash paper, and, um, and I burned, then I burned it up. It was quite fun. Um, you said things like, um, people won't get as upset. Things won't fester. People won't get mad and leave. We can give up all those hurt feelings. We can give up the misunderstandings that happen. Those things are all true. Oops, sorry. And I would like to ask now, what will we gain by having a covenant of right relations? You'll get a chance to answer that, but not quite yet. When I was in the UU Ministers of Canada retreat a couple of weeks ago, it was on Zoom, I heard one of my colleagues say, being in a congregation helps us become our best selves. I've thought about that quite a bit. I think what they were alluding to was the fact that congregational life can help us grow as individuals. We can learn to address conflict in a healthy way. We can speak directly to someone rather than indirectly about them. And we can learn how to have respectful but difficult conversations. I think a few of you have already heard me talk about the analogy that I use around a congregation is like a, a rock tumbler. We go into the tumbler. We can kind of like if you're walking down the back alley and pick up some rocks. That's kind of us. Only we're, we're all, we are beautiful just as we are. But we are before we head into the rock tumbler, we're dusty and maybe dirty and maybe pitted and maybe not shiny. Then we get in there and it gets turned on and the rocks bump into one another and it hurts. We do this over and over. We get our edges knocked off. We find out how we can speak directly. We become better people. We end up shiny. I have also spoken a few times here already about triangulation. So to give an example of what triangulation is, it's when tri person A is upset with person B, and instead of going back to person A and saying, I'm upset with you, they go to person C with a statement like, Okay, so person A is upset with person B and talks to person C about it instead of going back to person A with a statement like, 
When you did such and such, I felt angry, hurt, upset, disappointed, embarrassed, on and on. Could we please talk about that? So instead of going back to person A, A, B, and C have created a triangle. That's why it's called triangulation. And it can take the life out of an organization by making it unhealthy. Only healthy congregations, institutions, organizations can flourish. I wish I could say that I haven't heard about any triangulation here. But it gets back to me. People talk to other people about other people. Talk, people talk to other people about me. Just normal. So here's what I want you to think about. If someone comes to you with a complaint about someone else, your job from here on in is to say, have you talked directly to them about this? Now here's where it gets complicated. Sometimes we need to ask someone, am I reading this right? Am I overreacting? Did, did I get this wrong? That's, a, that's very different than going to someone and complaining about person A for half an hour about a decision they made without ever any, ten, any intention of fixing the problem. So, I'm available for consultation. I am the safest person for you to check out your worry or concern with. If you have a problem, you're person A, and you have a problem with person B, if you want to check it out, am I overreacting? Did I get this wrong? Should I be upset about this? Did I read it wrong? Come to me and talk to me about it, and I will help you navigate those tricky, murky, rolling waters. You could also go to the Committee on Shared Ministry, someone in that, in that committee, especially if your problem is with me. Or you could go to the board president if your problem is with me. And I don't think so highly of myself that you would never have a problem with me. I am a flawed human being, and I am just doing my best. The ultimate goal is for conflicts, disagreements, and other problems to be handled in a safe and healthy manner. That leaves gossiping, bad-mouthing, and complaining out in the cold. Difficult conversations help us grow, help us understand ourselves better, and it's what makes us strong. So, what are some of the things that you would like to see in a covenant of right relations? So things like confidentiality, respect, like everybody's got a piece of paper and a pen, and I'm going to invite you into groups. You can just work beside each other where you are if you want, or you can work alone. And I'm just going to give you a few minutes, and I was really worried this service was going to come in like way under time. So I apologize, but I think this is important work, and if you can bear with me to stay for a few minutes to do this work. Um, so I'm going to ask you to jot some things down on a paper, on the paper that you have. And what I'm asking for you to do is write down what you think should be in a covenant of right relations. There's paper and pens at the back if you didn't get any. I'm going to give you... I don't know, three, four minutes for this. Ready, set, go. Working together. Working together or alone, whichever you prefer.
for online people, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned, just put stuff in the chat and I will be capturing it. About 30 more seconds. I'm sorry you don't have very much time for doing this work. But if you have other ideas, no one's paying attention to me. doing this until I come back. Okay. Thank you. I love it when you folks get engaged in the work that we are doing together. This is such important work. And this is not our, our only kick at the can around covenant work. Um, we're going to continue working and um, we'll, we're hoping to have a draft mission, vision, and covenant uh, by the end of this church year. And it is just a draft and we will be continuing to, to work on it. So I conclude this with, by saying I don't have a clear sense of exactly what our mission, vision, and covenant will say. I do know that we are moving forward together. And we have taken our time, we have had a say, and even though we don't know where we're going, we are still going. So let's sing, whoa, oh, yeah, yeah, which those are the words. Even though I don't know where I'm going, I know that I'm going. Okay. Hymn number 1020. Don't open your hymn books because it's so confusing. The words will be up here. Just watch the screen because it flips back and forth, back and forth, and there's no way you can keep up with that. I certainly have never been able to. Okay. Whoa, yeah, yeah. Please stand as you are willing and able. It's a great hymn to end on.
you can leave your sheets of paper on your seats, we'll collect them. Thank you. And um, I'd like to call uh, Louise back up to extinguish our chalice, please. You may be seated. And John, would you to pick that? And just a reading as we extinguish our chalice. And uh, just note to everyone, when I say the word place, it refers to our um, Zoomitarians who are online as well. <laughs> You're part of our great extended place, and it's wonderful during the pandemic we've been able to have a broader connected community, so uh, we're thinking of you as well. Uh, may our lives be reflections of the peace, beauty, and joy that is possible in the world. And may the love we find in this place Sustain us as we go our separate ways. And our benediction. We are becoming familiar with these words, and so do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things can break, and things can mend, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So go and love intentionally, love extravagantly, and love unconditionally. The broken world waits for you because they are in darkness and they are waiting for you, each one of you, to light their way. So go in peace, gentle people, go in peace, amen. And now shall we sing our linking song, Carry the Flame.